Hello and welcome to another Kit Plus show supported by Media Proxy. Now we're all working very differently now. It's been coming for a while, of course, but the events of recent years have accelerated the development of technologies that we use to help us in these new workflows. Yes, and of course, central to a lot of this change has been the cloud and our ability to share and collaborate without wires quickly and reliably. There are a number of solutions out there, but they all have their unique benefits. And today we're speaking with Daniel List from Sony to tell us a bit about their camera to cloud solution. Hi, Daniel. Welcome to the show. Good to see you. Hi, gents. Thank you for having me. So, Daniel, uh, let's start by you telling us a little bit more about Sony's C3P solution. What is it and how, how does it work? Well, I mean, C3P is an acronym for a Connected Camera Portal um, on a cloud. So it's a th the three Cs, ca Camera, Connect, and Cloud, C3 Portal. Right. And uh, we, we've uh, gone in this direction in our uh, development phase for stepping in the terms of what we used to uh, do before with the XDCAM Air services, which was announced back in 2015 from Sony. Um, that platform has had its ups and downs when it came to how, what could we do and how could we integrate wirelessly between newsroom systems and cameras in the field uh, by using the internet and getting cameras acquired on the internet and getting them connected directly uh, to these newsroom systems. So it, obviously that was very broadcast based and news based and also XDCAM is our lineup of uh, of uh, specific cameras that have the XDCAM brand um, and we've now learned after so many years that we have customers who want to go beyond that there does not want to be limited in which kind of cameras can they choose for this kind of workflow even though they're doing news we see customers using very small cameras for um, for elegancy or being inconspicuous. So we also wanted to offer the same type of workflow in many of our camera workflows. So uh, that was uh, that was one of the main reasons to uh, to change up what we used to do. And C3 Portal also has opened up some new uh, possibilities because obviously we have 5G and obviously we also have uh, uh, some, some better ways of uh, rewriting software so we can introduce other benefits uh, on the fly or or even automatic workflows as well. Mm. So, is it is it an uh, is it an add on to a, a camera, or is it a feature of a camera? So, oh, can it be used with any camera, or what cameras yes. can we use it with? You know, is it you know, uh, yeah. Well, it could be it could be uh, it could be both really. Um, so many of our cameras have built in the possibility to connect to an internet source via, for example, a normal cable or uh, an LTE dongle by USB stick. Uh, so a SIM card to a USB connected to the camera, but it could also be Wi-Fi. Most of our cameras have built in Wi-Fi now which means they can connect to a network which offers them internet. So there's many different ways for our cameras to be connected to the internet. And while we're there, we yeah. can target that IP address that would be the, um, the C3 portal. And if you have the right uh, logging passwords, then uh, then you'd gain access and your camera will then figure on the chart for the, uh, for the user. So the, the people who own the server can now see an extra asset, which is this camera. Or it could be a miniature camera, which doesn't have the internet capabilities built in, but might be able to connect via USB. Uh, and this USB could be right. connected directly to a phone. And that phone has internet access. And that will then, because the phone is a smartphone, it would have an app that uh, helps the camera give the tools that it doesn't necessarily have built in. Um, it, it go, I mean, obviously, when you have a smaller okay. camera, it has less hardware. Um, so by using a smartphone, we can abuse that extra computer power to to make it more and make it smarter. Uh, and obviously, when mentioning yeah. phones, we we also have we we have the app, so we could use actually phones as a camera as an asset. Be it. The best camera is the one that you have with you when you're doing news. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk. Mobile data, Danny. I mean, firstly, there's there's obviously a cost with mobile data, and even with five G around the corner, it's not always fast. What are the file sizes we're talking about, or are they a proxy file that we're using here? Um, there's different workflows, and there's different ways of customers how they would like to um, do their workflow. Um, so it's mainly 
we need to have some kind of understanding what does the customer want to do instead of just um, activating everything at the same time. Um, obviously, we have the streaming capability. So uh, a camera can stream a direct video signal with our quality of service. So we have uh, redundancy in network connect connectivity errors, uh, you know, package resending. So the stream looks nice and it's also very fast. We offer down to 0 0.7 second sorry, 0 0.7 seconds in delay so, uh, at the moment. And, uh, and as, as time goes by in our development, we hope to go even further down in, in the delay. Um, that's the live streaming purposes. Uh, but also, as you mentioned before, there's proxy. So we can record on a camera uh, either a high-res file, original file, or proxy version of that original file. And depending on where you are, what kind of situation you're in, uh, obviously in Denmark right now, where I'm based, uh, we've been rolling out 5G quite aggressively. To be fair, it's a very flat country, so it's not that difficult to uh, make sure that you have full coverage. So that's not really a big problem. But in other areas yeah. where there's mountains and other things that could disturb the, the, the scenery, uh, we, we offer proxy workflow so you can relink whatever you've done with the proxy later uh, once the high res comes in. Uh, as long as you have the original files, there's metadata and we can abuse that metadata to make things more elegant for the user. I, I guess, and I'm going to be careful with this one, but God forbid anyone uses anything other than a Sony camera. But am I restricted to your own, so, you know, the, the, your, your, the mini cameras you mentioned, for example, I might be using mm -hmm. the GoPro rather than the RXO or something. Yeah. Am I restricted to the Sony workflow here or can I use it with any camera? Well, you can, um, there are things you can do with, uh, with our portal where it can go in and benefit uh, other manufacturers as well, because we have the drag and drop, uh, drag and drop uh, uh, workflow as well. Uh, we see a lot of customers, yeah. uh, especially in the news segment, who will work with many different cameras on the same shoot. So uh, let's uh, let's yeah. just take a, a car shot might be using a small camera. It might be a drone, which gives you that overhead uh, view and that extra angle. Yeah. These. Uh, are not yeah. particularly uh, yeah. most used Sony cameras. So, but they have metadata. They still know the time of day of the shot. They might even have GPS location and they have a serial number. And if we know who is working on a story with which cameras and which serial numbers, then we can do some magic in the background and make sure that whatever's been uploaded with that metadata, uh, serial number, GPS data, or even camera names, uh, camera, camera, um, dates, recording dates, well, that could be then yeah. taken advantage of uh, for our automation system that runs in the background. But it, again, that depends on what the customer wants. And we, we can yeah. offer some bespoke options instead of running on the fly. Mo obviously, Sony cameras are made to work with this. So if you have a Sony camera, it's very elegant to make it work. If you have another manufacturer's camera, you might need some extra devices to make it work. And it might not be as elegant because they don't have the same protocols as our Sony cameras have. So it's really up to the individual customer needs to determine what yeah. is possible. Yeah. What are the um, what are the standout features, Daniel, of the uh, C3P solution that um, that really make it stand out above the other solutions on the market at the moment? Mm, it's a good question. I mean, uh, we, as many other uh, cloud solutions, are um, in a in a negotiation and working on the Amazon Web Services, and uh, based on the client's needs, we can uh, target a specific uh, platform to be on a on a server that's most local to to where they need it to be. And Amazon Web Services is a uh, you know it's a global uh, service, so we can we have lots of servers to choose from. Um, should they be in Greenland for yeah. a project and they want the delay, um, so that's something we, we can go in and we can modify our services quite elegantly. Uh, we also have the integration with our other service uh, platforms like uh, Sony uh, Media Cloud Solutions, which is our uh, C account, where you can have lots of uh, uh, different workflows where you have a production or a work um, group of people uh, working in, in a, in a in a mm. cloud environment and we can integrate with that very elegantly because the cameras are already connected to the cloud service so we it can integrate bet between different uh, services that are already on the cloud we have customers who use s3 bucket workflows which is something that would be very elegant for us to just tap into and make sure that the files are coming in 
and go directly to to uh, to the S3 bucket. Um, so we we find some elegancy of being very flexible of what customers might want to experience as a customer journey. Uh, and we see that a lot of different things uh, in the news environment are evolving very fast. Uh, mobile journalism is one thing. Yeah. Uh, in the Nordics, we have a lot of photographers who have got a six-month journalistic education or journalists who's got a six-month photography education. And now they're a one-man band working around with professional cameras and a professional workflow, but need to be sure that everything is uh, going as elegant as possible. So everything they spend their time, us, yeah. time on works uh, works good enough for them. And it everything will go in the right folders when it's uh, up in the cloud. And um, there might be some MAM systems for particular customers that just need to work as they have always worked. And we can make sure that they do that. So it, I would say we, we are very flexible yeah. in, in our ways of working, regardless if it's, if it's streaming or file transfer, if it's a broadcast production or if it's sports or if it's news it doesn't really have to be one thing we can make sure that our services are are very uh, elegantly aligned and it's also based on uh, what you do is what you pay for so we have customers who have 50 cameras but they might only have five cameras online a day and you only pay a day charge per what you use so you don't pay for 50 cameras you pay for the five cameras that you're using uh, so we're very flexible in pricing as well. Uh, and, and obviously when you have an election or something that is breaking news and you need to turn everything on, we're going to be very adaptive in making sure that all of those cameras turned on will work when you really need them. But you only pay, pay for, the, for the duration that you're using them. So I would say we're quite strong in being flexible for the customer's needs and not going over budget. Actually, and in the news environment, there's, there's a big buzzword now in the, in the background, AI. Now, yes. I understand there's been some AI features included in in, in, in this. Well, give us a, little, a brief background of what AI features. Well, we've we've started to integrate the uh, the services of speech to text. I mean, we use this for metadata generation, but also obviously for any kind of uh, um, tools for subtitle generation. Um, so. By using uh, by using the speech to text, we can accumulate more metadata. That could be a, a an enhanced search engine that we will then take part of. So we have the possibility to search for keywords that has been said in an interview, and we can find them maybe fourteen days ago. Wasn't there somebody who said something about I don't know a lizard? And then you can search for that, and it, you'll then obviously uh, be able to find who said that word uh, back in the past. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. Where can we yeah. send viewers, Daniel, to find out more about this? Well, I mean, we have the Pro.Sony homepage where you have the C3 portal, uh, and that is uh, the, the full information for what we can do. Uh, you have also the possibility to sign up for a trial uh, basis, which is very easy now. It wasn't that easy before, but now we've made trial basis much uh, faster and much easier, uh, and they're still free of charge. So if you have a Sony camera and you have a destination that you'd like to use, well, then we have the way to get there faster by do, using and introducing a, a trial uh, account. So you can see, is this something for me? And we would very much like to um, be a partner when you want to do go through this trial phase. So you will normally be uh, contacted by a Sony employee if you sign up for a trial phase, uh, and then we'll uh, make sure and see how everything goes if, it's, if it fits the customer's uh, expectations. Brilliant. Thank you, Daniel. Brilliant. Really good to talk to you. And uh, yeah, you. do check out the website for all those details on Sony's C3P solution. Thanks to Media Proxy for their support, Kit Plus TV, and thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and do check out the podcast versions of these shows if you're on the move. You can find those at kitplus.com forward slash podcast. We'll see you next time.